Hello there. Yes, finally back with some Star Trek, the original series reactions, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ellie Moses, a 23-year-old law and film student here from Sydney, Australia. Shitty as shot, baby. And you heard it right. I'm watching Star Trek, the original series for the first time. And if I'm being straight up honest, Miri was not the best episode. Though some of you in the comment sections do actually like the episode. But for me, it wasn't the best episode. And in my opinion, uh, it did turn me off Star Trek, the original series for a little bit. I haven't watched an episode in a week. And and usually I like to have an episode in the bag as soon as I upload a Star Trek reaction. So when I do upload a reaction, there's one already recorded. And that wasn't the case with Miri because I was just like, you know what? I'm not really interested in going back to this show at the moment. And that's just being me on me being honest. I hope you guys appreciate that honesty. But yeah, I'm still going to continue with it. We are watching episode 10 today. I think it's titled uh, Dagger of the Mind. Um, so yeah, let's get into the reaction. I believe episode 9, sorry. It's episode 10 on Netflix and that's because it counts the original unaired pilot so yeah episode nine dagger of the mind let's get into the reaction have some fun with this thing let's smash it let's go why does something always go wrong with the beaming <laughs> having trouble gentlemen i just don't understand the problem sir you're beaming cargo down to a penal colony mr record request opening in your force field for beaming down of cargo enterprise affirmative our security cover is now open energize oh, okay it was a security issue my bad my bad Also, one of the Breaking Bad episodes I just watched recently, I know it's Breaking Bad and it's a completely different show, but there was two characters and they were high off their heads and they were just talking about Star Trek, the original series. And they were talking about how each time something is beamed down, um, it creates like a duplicate copy of someone. And they were talking about they were like apparently being 150 Kirks and this is not the real Kirk and things like that. And I was so intrigued. I'm like, I can relate to that. I've started this show. But is that does that theory have any like sort of um, weight to it? Like, does it, oh, is that just completely random and it was just two high guys? <laughs> just one item, sir. Some research material bomb for the Central Bureau of Penology, Stockholm. I'm gonna start calling these guys Red Dead Redemption. Yes. Yes, Red Dead Redemption. You heard that right. <laughs> Red for the clothing, dead because that's what they'll end up, and redemption because the crew finds out and they gotta get redemption for the deaths. <laughs> Kinda of sounds like a fast-paced Jaws theme right there. And this came out before Jaws, so I wonder if there was any inspiration from this here. <laughs> Terribly sorry, Captain. I take all the blame. Let me repeat. He's clever as well as extremely violent. Take all possible precautions. We'll keep you posted, Doctor. Kirk out. They didn't beam that guy up by accident. Like, come on. We take all the blame. The, the tone of voice in which he said that is like... Interesting. The Earth people glorify organized violence for 40 centuries. <laughs> but you imprison those who employ it privately. You dispose of emotion, Doctor. Where there's no emotion, there's no motive for violence. And Leonard Nimoy is so good in this show. Where's the captain? No. No, I'm not going back. I'll disable your vessel first. You choose, Captain. I'll destroy your control panel. Light work. Light work. Sick bay. Dr. Van Gelder, Captain. No mistake. There's a full ID tape on him. Committed to Tantalus Colony when? Assigned there six months ago as Dr. Adams' associate. Surface. You know what they've done so far that's good in this episode? They've good, done a good job at establishing sort of this aura of mystery so far. You know, you've had this individual beamed up from this Tantalus um, sort of colony. Um, he might have beamed himself up um, just to get a, a sort of, uh, just to escape from that colony. And it's sort of like shrouded this episode in mystery. Oh, I wonder if they're going to beam down to this Tantalus colony. What does it look like? Who runs it? What's going on there that this individual beams himself up? Um, and is sort of, you know, he's scared out of his mind. He's like almost schizophrenic in a way. Like he's 
full on going crazy um but yeah it's interesting like I, I i like episodes that sort of get me a little bit intrigued that way and have this element of mystery and um this is what this show is all about you know exploring the unknown and this episode is sort of like uh going along that line so far the open, sir. uss enterprise tantalus column tantalus this is captain kirk i'd like to speak to dr adams stand by enterprise we're in it in the last 20 years Dr. Adams has done more to revolutionize, to humanize prisons and the treatment of prisoners than all the rest of humanity had done in 40 centuries. I've been to those penal colonies since they've begun following his methods. And they're not cages anymore. Jim. They're clean, decent hospitals for sick minds. Jim, listen. Gentlemen, I suggest you ask Dr. Adams if he wants Van Gelder returned. I love how Spock ends up always being like the mediator. <laughs> In fact, I'd take it as a personal favor if you'd beam down and look into it yourself. Yay! We're so going down. I sure realize we don't get too many visitors here. Oh, I, uh, Captain, I would appreciate it if you could come down with a minimum staff. We're forced to limit outside contact as much as possible. That's Affirmative, Captain. Doctor. I've visited rehab colonies before. Enterprise out. I don't know, it seems like Kirk is like, he's like excited to meet this Dr. Adams guy, like. <laughs> Captain's log, star date 2715.2. He's like Standard fanboying. <laughs> Find a Tantalus 5. Mission, routine investigation and report. That's, that's who, that. Dr. Helen Noel, Captain. That's, that's. We've met? But that, the, where the fudge is she? Where has she been on the ship? She's the person McCoy employed. But a what? Kirk, you're meant to have an understanding of all your staff. Don't you remember the science lab Christmas party? Yes, I remember. Oh, that was fun. No, oh, they are. Yes, yes, I remember. They do have a history. Problem, Captain. <laughs> Fuck. You tell McCoy that she had better check out as the best assistant I ever had. <laughs> oh, that looks like a cool miniature right there. I wonder if it is, because that looks that looks really cool. <laughs> I don't think you'll be able to get through the security screen, Captain. Just a second. See, all these places are dodgy. Yeah, Correct to Enterprise, come in. Enterprise, Spock here. Your landing coordinates were right on the nose, Mr. Spock. We arrived safely and we're here with Dr. Adams right now. Kirk out. Affirmative, Captain. Enterprise out. Before you came here. I was another person. Malignant, hateful. May I ask what crime you committed? Does it matter? That person no longer exists? Uh, part of our cure. If you will, Captain, is to bury the past. <laughs> Why should a person go on living with unbearable memories if there's no necessity? Oh, I feel quite sure that you concur with me in that, Doctor. Helen. The shifting of memory patterns is basic to psychotherapy. To all mankind, may we never find space so vast, <laughs> planets so cold, heart and mind so empty that, that we cannot fill them with love I wonder why the camera decided to hold on that woman right there with that sort of medium close-up shot of her face while Adams was talking. Guessing there's more mystery to her. Quite a tour, Doctor. Very impressive. Thank you. Since you brought me down here for advice, Captain... One of the advantages of being a captain, Doctor, is being able to ask for advice without necessarily having to take it. I think I'll have to award that round to the Captain, Helen, if I'd know of your way. <laughs> All right, let's take a look. Man. <laughs> Tranquilizers are fine, Captain, but to continually pump chemicals into a person's blood. Exactly my point, Helen. Yes. Tony? I feel like this individual here operating. The... How does it work? He's been hit with this. Quite simple. Off, on switches, and the large control here changes the strength of the brain neutralizing beam.
Thank you. <laughs> yeah, this individual here has been you will neutral. forget all you have heard. Any word will cause you pain. I feel like this individual operating it has been neutralized himself as well and has been like sort of programmed to do one thing alone and is just operate this thing and he's like sort of being programmed to have only a few responses as well mccoy here received and understood but we still have some doubts up here captain can you tell us anymore not really when do you plan to beam back up captain i think we'll spend the night here mr spark no no <laughs> this guy's like no will continue like, to he knows he knows every four hours no 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 don't let them you must warn your captain no no don't let him stay don't let him stay don't no no hello Come simon he's looking out for please. kirk he knows what's up <laughs> anyway we can look into this man's mind to see if what he's saying is real or delusion it's like a hidden try. personal thing to the vulcan people what about private lives? Now look, Spock. Jim Kirk could be in real trouble. Will it work or not? Could be dangerous. You know what I like about this show? Um, this episode as well has done it a lot. And I don't know if you guys agree with me. Um, I really enjoy the framing. And there's very, very little reliance on sort of like cutting to close-ups of one individual delivering his lines. So for instance, um, when Spock was talking with Captain Kirk as they were talking about spending the night, um, rather than just cutting to a close-up of Spock's face or like a medium close-up shot of him delivering his lines, no, it was a perfect, beautiful sort of like medium wide shot um i know it's in the four by three aspect ratio but it was like a perfect medium shot of spock mccoy and simon in the background and they're all in focus and spock was delivering his lines and what that does as well it enables the audience to be immersed in the scene and understand how actors are sort of reacting or how different characters are reacting to what actors are saying and then um it displays an actor's range as well um and it really demonstrates because i feel like in this show Everyone has unique and distinct performances. Um, even the one-off characters in episodes, um, I feel like they all sort of stand out. The performances are great in the show, like really, really great. Um, and for example, I'm watching Ahsoka at the moment and I love Ahsoka. I've said this time and time again, she's my favorite character in Star Wars, but the show at points, the directing, um, or I don't know if it's the directing, but the acting is very stale and wooden. And I don't know if that's intentional, but there's no sort of nuance. There's no character that sort of stands out because everyone is sort of delivering their lines in sort of the same monotone, wooden um, sort of line delivery and same tone of voice. Whereas in this show, everyone's unique and distinct, I feel like. And no matter if the episode's crap or not, um, everyone delivers fine performances. And Kirk and Spock are the standouts, always, always. Nimoy and uh, Shatner always stand out in each episode. But even the introductory characters or the characters that are sort of like one offs um for the episodes um that are like problem of the week off episodes they all deliver great performances as well but it's the framing and scene setting that allows them to do that as well because they very cut they very rarely cut to a close-up of one character in frame unless it's intended um and it's to signify something but other than that it will display the actor's range by showing them all in frame at once there's always like minimum two characters in frame it requires i make pressure changes and your nerves blood vessels you must open my mind let me warn you explain to you he can reshape any mind he chooses he used it to erase our memories he put his own thoughts there well that's how it powered <laughs> he was surprised it took so much power I'm getting a little bit of 2001 A Space Odyssey vibes and A Clockwork Orange vibes with this episode. Anytime you're ready, Doctor, just for a second or two. We already tried it for that long, Captain. That minimum intensity Nothing happened. wiped his memory. Something happened. For that little bit. Your face went completely blank. Doesn't even recall. Try a harmless suggestion.
curiosity of this place is getting the better of Kirk. You're hungry. You know, when we finally get through this, I'd like to locate and raid a kitchen somewhere. I put that suggestion in your mind, Captain. I said simply that you were hungry. Remarkably effective for a device that Dr. Adams was going to abandon. <laughs> I think we should try this again. No! Pick something unusual, an unusual suggestion. Something we can both be sure of. At the Christmas party. I knew she was going to reference we that. Met. You danced. You talked about the stars. I suggest now that it happened in a different way. You swept me off my feet. Oh, she want to run it back. And carried me to your cabin. She want to do Christmas party the sequel. She want to run it back. <laughs> Wet dreaming, thinking that I'm smashing, but I'm sleeping. <laughs> Shout out, J. Cole. <laughs> Kirk is going to have a complete demonstration. I want there to be no doubts whatsoever in his not the full power. Not the full power. There's no going back. I'm madly in love with Helen, Captain. You'd lie, cheat, steal for her. Sacrifice your career, your reputation. No, Doctor, no! Continue to remember that, Captain. Now, she's gone. We need to beam the other boys down. We need backup. Man, forget about the neutralizer. We need the neuralizer here. We need Tommy Lee Jones and Will Smith. I need you, Helen. Now, Captain, just take your phaser weapon and drop it on the floor. Why does it always have to be Kirk that gets violated? He has to go through the ringer every episode. Doppelganger Kirk. Captain, evil Gollum Kirk. Bless you, old man. Brainwashed Kirk. Hypnotized Kirk. How many versions of Kirk are we going to get? Very good, Captain. The merchandise sale is going to be crazy. Good. Come on, Kirk. Fight it. Fight it. Contact the boys. Contact the boys. Kirk, you end the prize. Yes. Oh, oh she. My guy went. Kirk, you end the prize. I'll tell you what, this is a better episode than them kids and Miri. Fuck them kids! <laughs> Mega voltage. Touch the wrong line and you're dead. I wonder. Anything's better than Adam's treatment room. <laughs> I, I wonder if Kirk himself in, in the show is meant to embody like human resilience resilience and the strength of the human mind because he's portrayed as a really strong individual obviously he's been through the ringer at points but um there are various explorations of humanity done through kirk and i guess spock himself is meant to represent sort of like the antithesis of that possibly like sort of like humanity interacting with other alien life forms and sort of getting along with each other but at the same time learning human values and emotions from one another i guess um because they have a very good partnership with one another um and i'm not sure if this show was a nod to sort of like because it was made at the time where i think um space exploration was being done um in the world and i guess that element of the unknown um was sort of being pl not play was sort of going through everyone's minds i guess i'm not sure how society reacted to it at the time i wasn't born but i guess when you start having that sort of hint okay we're gonna explore space what are we gonna discover could there be aliens could there be this and this show is sort of like exploring those themes as well um and we get that today as well i feel like i mean you've recently had all these ufo sightings and information in the current weeks and you just think to yourself okay i wonder how humanity would react to this or that um and this show i feel like explores that really well um and i guess kirk represents sort of like the boundaries of the human mind and its limits as well like in terms of like how much we can take um how our minds will react to certain things as we discover sort of things that are inhumane at points i'm not sure but for another treat i hope you get what i mean and we're going down the dollhouse vibe with this episode it's time for your treatment <laughs> please don't fight me Kevin. where's eliza dishku when you need her pain only gets worse when you're done oh. 
so many people with god complexes god complexes in this show see that's how from 2001 a space odyssey <laughs> I wonder what um, the crest on Adam's crew represents. You got the hand, um, sort of like with the dove and the sun. All right, she shut off power. This is where we get to get. Yes, yeah, that's right. I wanted. To, I was about to say this is where we get to see over exaggerated Kirk movements. I love it. <laughs> oh, yo, Helen, fighting back. I got the Daniel Stern treatment from Home Alone 2. Spock, the force field is gone. I can send you right to the source of the interruption. Get some security people and follow me down. That's it. Spock and the boys are coming down. It's over. It's over. Like, wrap it up. Wrap it up. Energize. Oh, he beamed right down to the... Oh, what a beam. Yeah, have a taste though in your... Wow, I was literally about to say, have a taste of your own medicine. Dr. Adams, there you go. Captain! Captain? Yo, shout out Helen, she did well. I want to see more of her. Helen, you want Yes. Relax, this it's not right, Christmas Captain. now, man. Dr. Adams did this to you. Dr. Adams. <laughs> Doctor. Yeah, that's right. Ah, uh, yeah, the men in red doing their thing. Yeah. That's what I like to see. So I'm guessing with Simon, he was treated on so much that he went insane. Whereas Spock, oh not Spock, sorry, Kirk. He's dead, Captain. The machine was not high enough to kill. Him. Exactly. Imagine a mind emptied by that thing. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, fair enough. No one to give him thoughts. Not even a tormentor for company. I understand. I understand too. Captain's log, forty-eight point one. <laughs> Man, fuck that colony. <laughs> Not again. We should nuke it from orbit. This is from Van Gelder. We thought you'd like to know the treatment room had been dismantled. The equipment destroyed. Yay! Thank you. So Van Gelder was good enough to go back? It's hard to believe that a man could die of all that. Not when you've sat in that room. That line hit hard. That line hit hard. Take us out of orbit, Mr. Spock. Yeah! Ahead, warp factor one. Acknowledge, Captain. Warp factor one. It's hard that a man it's hard that a man could die of loneliness. It's hard to think that a man could die of loneliness. That one that one hit. That hit hard. That was delivered fantastically. Well, there you have it, guys. That was episode nine of Star Trek, the original series titled Dagger of the Mind. I actually um, enjoyed that episode a lot more than Miri. I felt like the pacing was a little bit better. It's still slow at points, but the pacing was definitely um, a bit more uh, fluid. Uh, fluid? What the heck am I saying? Um, it was just a bit more well paced, a bit more well paced than Miri. I felt like Miri. I found my I found myself at times just thinking to myself, "Is this episode over?" And it wasn't. And this time with this one, I checked the time of the episode. Um, at a certain point, I'm like, "Okay, there's only 15 minutes left. What the heck?" Um, it was really well paced. Um, and yeah, I I thought it was a decent episode of Star Trek. Um, yet again, performances of Shatner and Nimoy are always fantastic. I thought Helen was great this episode. I thought everyone was great this episode as well, actually. I even thought the individual who portrayed um, Simon uh, Van Gel was it? Um, he was great as well. So yeah, um, solid episode of Star Trek, a decent one. Uh, nonetheless, I just like the themes that sometimes that are explored in this show. I just like the boundaries of, of humanity that are tested. I just, yeah, I love to see Kirk always resist these things and just, um, you know, Show the strength of the human mind. <laughs> but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed my reaction. Uh, it's been your boy Moses. Take care. God bless. Peace.